These stacks are super glitchy when it comes to how close they are against man coverage. As you can see, both cornerbacks get caught up to the point where I could probably throw to either one of them. I mean, I could throw to this guy who's wide open. You could always go the other way. As you can see, the cornerbacks are blocking each other once again to the point where both of these receivers get open against just about every single defense. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffle the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a new offense from a brand new playbook for you guys today. As I'm trying to record some new footage for what's either going to be the Detroit Lions offensive ebook that I'm going to put out next or the Pittsburgh Steelers or maybe both because I like both of these playbooks and the offense I'm going to show you guys today is in both of these playbooks. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section as I try to put out an offensive or a defensive breakdown at least once a week. Or if you guys want more help and more money plays, you can download these or any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or in the top pinned comment. The formation I'm going to focus on today is going to be the single back wing stack as this is one of the most diverse offenses when it comes to running and pass plays now i'm going to start off with the run plays as i find that this is probably the basis of this formation anytime you're under center one of the biggest benefits is going to be the variety of run plays you typically only get like simple inside zones from just about anything that you'll get when it comes to uh, being under center now for my audible plays how i would set this up is i would typically have the halfback zone week as my only run play in my audibles because you want to have an inside run and an outside run my fifth play would most likely be uh, the stretch run uh, which is right here this is going to be the play that I come out in as my active play every single time but as far as my passing audible plays I think the smash is a really good dink and dunk play but it's also a one play touchdown against cover three and a couple other defenses the PA fork is going to be a one play touchdown against just about everything so that's definitely going to be important to have my audibles as well and the PA power O is going to be one of the best plays against cover zero if you have somebody who likes to spam that but there's a lot of options for your audible passing plays but that would be my three now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start off with the run play, starting with, like I said, my fifth and active play, the halfback stretch. Now as I normally do, I'm going to try to hurry up with uh, some of the run plays because there's really not a ton to this. I find it's typically best just to flip the play with the right stick and run it behind the receivers. You can see that they run fake routes, so typically that will pull back the defender. They call that a runoff in this game, and you can see how you know that'll do enough to let me get to the outside and have some you know, opportunities for big plays. But you can always run to the other direction too. I mean, if there's, you know, the two tight ends keep the um, the cornerbacks that are supposed to be playing outside, they'll typically play closer to the point where they'll get blocked. And that's because in this game, the game's not, uh, the cornerbacks aren't programmed to respect the speed of Madden. You can see right here, this is probably like a cover three, might be a cover six or something like that because the cornerback on the receiver side is showing more respect to the speed of the receivers over there and starting further away. Where on the other side, you can see the cornerback's closer because he's not going to respect the speed of the tight ends. And that means they can often get out and get you a good block. So this is the easily the basis of this running scheme right here. So you can really run this play to either side, but I would say uh, on a play like this, you can see that defensive end is out kind of wide. I would probably want to take it to the two tight end side against this look. But if it's all the same and you don't have a defensive end that's out wide like this, you could say it's best to run uh, behind the receivers against man. And against zone, it's probably best to run it behind the tight end. That's probably one of the better ways. I'm trying to flip the play right here. Against zone, run it behind tight end. Against man, run it behind the receivers. That would be my uh, best indicator if you can get to the edge. Like I said here, I'm probably going to get cut off. I'll try it. But I'm probably going to get cut off by that defensive end. Although you can see he actually got around and turned that. So you can see, you know, we get a very good play there once again. It's like I said, this is going to be the bread and butter run play for this entire formation now that's the best outside run with the exception of a, of a jet sweep I'll show you in a minute but the best inside run is definitely the halfback zone weak so let's go and let's pick that now if your opponent starts spraying the defensive line or if you see a gap like this which I think is by design where you can see the defensive end is just out a little bit wider on the left side so you can kind of maintain that edge compared to the right side if you see that switch to this play you can always flip it too if you see a gap anywhere along the line but switch to this play and just run inside you'll notice a lot of times that guard will get a double team and get down to the next uh, level but there he just was kind of slow to get off of it uh, but we'll do it again this might be a blitz blitzing is a little bit different but you can see it actually helped out here because now uh, we're, we're off to the races because he got you know guaranteed contact so this is going to be your best inside run and you can really run it to either direction and that's all you really need to know about this run scheme if they're spreading you can run this inside with the, with the halfback zone weak and if they're pinching you could run it outside with the stretch it's really that simple there's the look that I was waiting for from the last play where the guard uh, basically double teams and then gets to the next level now there is one more run play that I like or two more run plays really because you have the zone fake jet and the jet sweep 
I would say the Jet Sweep is probably the best out of the two, but they really work together. So I'm going to pick the Jet Sweep. This play here probably works best against man coverages, things like cover three, which this could be either one, man cover one or cover three, I'm not really sure. But put your fastest receiver in this spot or your best playmaking receiver, and you'll see how a lot of times you can get around this edge. As you can see right here, that's just a poor angle. I probably could have cut that up short too. So that's pretty much it for the run plays with the exception of like the Jet Sweep and the Zone Fake Jet, which can't be found in certain formations, but I don't find they're as successful as they might have been in the past. So I'm gonna go to move on to what I think is probably the best dink and dunk play in the smash. Let's go and let's pick that. This is a one play touchdown against certain defenses too, so I'll start getting to that soon. But let's go ahead and let's show this against random first. Now you got a high low concept here with the tight ends, which is you know pretty effective. As you can see there, they got a little bit close to one another, but you have that option. I find this is actually a choice route that the one tight end is running. So I find it's best just to put the RB route, just redrag him. Because you saw, number one, he got way too far down the field. And you can see how, you know, that could, you don't want them running too close. So I would say redrag him is a good move. But you also have the option to basically just put the X route on a streak. And if you're on a hash mark like I am here, any zone coverage, this B route is going to pretty much get open. As you can see right here, you can just dot up the sideline as long as you safe catch that. But now that I'm running this to the open side of the field, you got a couple different options. I find putting the X receiver on a flat is a very good play for some short, easy yards, especially like a catch and run. I mean, that basically runs like an RPO play. Any zone coverage, that receiver is going to get open. You can accentuate that even more by motioning this guy across and putting him on a streak. And then if I did this, I want to put the A receiver on a drag just for a better check down if it turns out to be a man coverage. But you can see how the coverage just drops back on the streak and on the corner route to the point where I can steal that just about every single play and that's really what I'm trying to do here you could also put the X receiver on a drag and redrag the RB route like I was saying this will give you a pretty good high low concept with the I mean we still have the a tight end over the middle if I'm doing this I'd probably put the Y receiver on a uh, on a curl because this is going to give me double drags, which is something that doesn't really exist in this formation, but you can complete that all game for, you know, five to ten yards, catch and run easy. And then if the user follows, then you have the option to basically take the uh, the wide receiver. If, if the user chases, you'll have, um, you know, the running back underneath, which I just kind of forced there. Obviously, running backs don't catch as well. But that's just give you an idea of the multiple concepts that you can do with this. You can even go as far as to motion out the running back or motion across the um this tight end here or either tight end really and just double drag them and now you have a double drag concept although i messed up the, uh, the corner route but uh but you have options you have a lot of options when it comes to um the multiple type of um you know plays that uh, are really hard to stop like double drags is really hard to stop the the check down route to the running back is really hard to stop uh, together, all this running together. And the same thing with the corner route. The corner route's really hard to stop as well if you have somebody, I mean, I'm not running into the hash mark, but if I was to run this as like a full setup play where I wanted multiple options like this, that would really be hard to stop. I'd run from a hash mark like this, I'd motion across my tight end, and I would put the, um, I'd put the running back here on a curl and you can see how you're going to have the corner out which is going to beat every every zone coverage you're going to have the double drags which is going to be any man or zone and then you have the curl running back which will beat any user but this play also has one play touchdown capability against certain zone coverages like cover two and cover three so let's go and let's pick that again we're going to start off with tampa two against cover two just put the x receiver on a streak and that's all you really got to do as that will be enough to get this B receiver open outside for a potential catch and run one play touchdown if you have enough speed. I'm not sure AJ Brown's gonna have enough speed to turn that corner, but a few more speed points would be enough for this to be an easy one play touchdown against cover two. But what this play really does best is cover three. So let's go and let's pick that again and we'll do cover three sky. Against cover three, you gotta do that streak one more time, but you're also going to either motion out this tight end here or the running back and put them on streak so you can spread the field like this. Because when you use this type of route against cover three, that cover three cornerback is going to bite. As long as you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, like I am here, and you can see how you can create a huge gap right up that seam. Although that wasn't even the largest gap that I usually get. I usually get a bigger one than that. And that's because this corner route here will pull the cover three cornerback outside to the point where this particular guy is really just running naked up the seam for a very easy one play touchdown as long as you bullet and pass lead away from the safety and cornerback. This play can also have a lot of success against man coverages. So let's go ahead and let's pick cover zero against cover zero just motion this guy across you can see how the cornerback covering the b receiver jumps inside which is going to be a huge uh, mistake uh, i'm just going to give myself a little more blocking with a check and release tight end which can also be a decent check down but you can see how i can get an easy catch and run outside as long as i bullet past that and lead that properly 
uh, with good timing. As you can see, it's a very easy one-play touchdown. This play can also have a lot of success against cover two man, so let's go and let's pick that. Against cover two man, this can be a bit spotty, but if you put the X receiver on a streak and the A receiver on a streak, a lot of times the B receiver will get open outside. I didn't get a very dominant animation there. A lot of times you'll see, um, you know, I mean, that was pretty easy, uh, you know, completion, but a lot of times you'll get this animation like that where he bumps off and then he's just going to be open way more for an easier catch and run, but then I get that jumping catch animation, so obviously that's not going to help with the catch and run, but you can see how this can be a, a good play. I would see putting the RB route on a, on a drag for a check down would be a good option as we're getting that bump animation one more time there. And we might actually have a catch run one play touchdown here as we do get going. And I'm gonna call that a touchdown because it looks like he passed to me. <laughs> so that's it for that play. Uh, and the majority of the dink and dunk stuff as I'll just touch on that when I get to those particular plays as I wanna start getting to some of these one play touchdowns starting with some of the man beaters. So we're gonna start off with the PA power O because this is pretty much a single use play that I really only use to, to beat man zero. So let's go and let's pick that. We'll pick man zero on the defensive side. The only real adjustment I would make so this is not a giveaway is putting the RB route that's already on a block on a delay uh, a delay cross or on a delay drag because I don't want him giving away what I'm doing but you'll see how the B receiver can be an instant one play touchdown as they got really crossed up there on the defensive side that wasn't even a look that I was expecting as the receivers really just got jumbled up if you watch the cornerbacks on this play I mean they get really jumbled up every single time basically preventing them from covering either receiver I could take the check down or I could take the deeper route which is obviously going to be the one that I choose since that's an easy one play touchdown right over the middle but that's not always the look you're going to get so I'll go ahead and I'll run that one more time to show you that you don't need that look because it's still an instant one play touchdown every single time just because of how this play is designed and this is the look you're going to get traditionally where he basically turns the cornerback around completely at about five to ten yards meaning that i can throw this ball instantly and there's no cover zero blitz in the game that's going to get to you before your receiver gets five to ten yards down the field as i actually wait till he got about 20 yards down the field and i still get a very easy catch on my one play touchdown this play could also have success against cover one so let's pick cover one hole against cover one it's not going to be a one play touchdown but if you put the rb route on a streak to pull back the safety the b receiver will still have the same effect and be a big play as long you throw it out instantly so it's a very good man beating play against pretty much just any man coverage even though it's obviously best against cover zero now the best play i like anyway of this entire formation is probably the pa fork we're gonna go we're gonna pick that and we're gonna go coverage to coverage because this is gonna be a one play touchdown against just about everything so we're gonna start off with tampa two so for this play here just put the b receiver on a fade and put the rb tight end on a 10 yard out route and I find it's best to run from a hash mark like I am here, as I can actually throw to either one of these receivers. You can see right here that um, you know if you get if you if you get that guy to flip his hips like he did, you can see how you really have options to either receiver, and that's because this safety really has to cover both receivers at one point. I mean, I could throw to this guy who's wide open. Or, like I said, since he's kind of turning inside, if I go back to when I threw the ball, I probably threw the ball right around here because you can see this is when he's got the most acceleration. Or at least this is when I'm loading up. As you can see here, I'm basically getting this ball out, bullet and pass lead away enough outside the reticle that you can really score with either one of these receivers. But you're probably going to want more speed to do that when it comes to the B receiver. And like I said, I really, if I really want to, motion this guy out will help split the safeties more for the X receiver over the middle, which is definitely going to be the easier of the two. As you can see, I could just split that. And I actually, you know, he kept me out of the, out of the end zone there. So to me, Tampa 2 is much improved. And I almost feel like um, you know, the B might be the better option on this play. Now, it's basically going to be the exact same setup when it comes to cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that. For this play, pretty much the exact same thing. Just going to put the fade and the 10 yard out route. The, uh, the only thing is I'm not really thinking that the B receiver is going to be the play here as this is going to be a much better option as we split the safeties this time and get a very easy one play touchdown once again. So we'll pick that again and we'll continue with man coverages uh, going cover one hole next. Against cover one, just put the B receiver on a fade to both pull back the single high safety but also to help get the X receiver open as this stack can be really glitchy when it comes to uh, man coverages. And even though I got a bad throw because of the pressure, you can see how wide open the receiver gets. These stacks are super glitchy when it comes to how close they are against man coverage. As you can see, both cornerbacks get caught up to the point where I could probably throw to either one of them, but I'll typically choose the post route because this one's the easiest as we score a very easy one play touchdown once again. But since those guys are running into one another, if you see that animation early, you can always go the other way. As you can see, the cornerbacks are blocking each other once again to the point where both of these receivers get open against just about every single defense. 
We'll continue to choose that play and we'll continue with man coverages by picking cover zero next. Gonna be the same thing. We just put the B receiver on a fade. I'll check and release the running back as well though. And you'll see how the B receiver and the X receiver both get wide open as the cornerback that was supposed to be covering this guy was nowhere to be found. And we can see how the cornerbacks get each other's way once again because of the stack and he's just totally out of position as he just whiffs. And this guy's basically running down the field uncovered at this point for another easy one play touchdown. So that's pretty much it for man coverages. Let's move on to cover three and we'll finish out all the zones. Against cover three, just running from a hash mark like I am here to the short side of the field and then put the B receiver on a fade to pull back the safety. And then once you motion this guy out here, it'll give you the option to put him on a comeback route. Now, you can also do this with the A tight end or the running back if you want to mix it up. But that will hold the cover three cornerback down, making it very easy to bomb this defense once the X receiver crosses the safety. As you can see, he has nothing but space. And we could have scored from just about anywhere there as we get another one-play touchdown. Also has a lot of success against cover four. So let's go ahead and let's pick uh, cover four quarters first. Then we'll do cover four drop. Against cover four, this play is even easier as this uh, check and release that the RB route is running really confuses the right side. All you really got to do is run from a hash mark to the short side of the field one more time and then put the B receiver on a fade. And you're going to see how easy it is to score against this defense as long as you get a good bullet and pass lead away for another easy catch and run one play touchdown. And this is another play where the B receiver can score as well based off of how much these defense of backs get bumped around if the b receiver doesn't get bumped around he's going to be gone as you can see right there he does get over the top of the cornerback for another easy one play touchdown and this is another defense where both routes can score as long as this receiver doesn't get bumped around too much you can see that he gets wide open outside as long as you bullet and pass it away from the safety for another easy score but you can see that on the other side the post route is also wide open every single time, giving you two routes to score against every defense in the game. Now, for the last defense cover four, the best play to use is gonna be something that I haven't even shown yet, and that's the PA digs. So let's go and let's pick that, and we'll continue on defense with cover four drop contain. This is kind of a slow developing play, but if you put the B receiver on a fade and the A tight end on a streak, They'll pull back the safeties enough that the X receiver can get wide open for a one-play touchdown. I'm also going to block the running back just for extra pass, bro. Although, typically, you don't get much of a pass rush when it comes to cover four, just as long as you can wait long enough for this receiver to cross the field for a very easy one-play touchdown. So I'm going to end the video there. We scored a one-play touchdown against every single defense in the game, some of which in multiple ways. If you guys want to see more videos like this, I'll have them popping up on screen. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.